basic video of Chevy Cobalt Pontiac G5. Most cars are, most any car is similar. Inner tie rod removal. Of course, it also applies to the outer. Symptoms are this tire has less than 5,000 miles on it, and there's no tread, but it's evenly worn. And by shaking the wheel left and right, um, back and forth, we were able to see the inner was moved out. So you would just move it this way and that way. You wiggle it and have someone under look at it too. That's a good way to do it, have two people. Now this one looks generic that was on here. Might have been replaced at one time. It's got a generic part number. The inner is good. It's a Moog. You see the Moog? I put that on there one time and I can't even move it. So that's a good thing. And this thing was all if it's at 50, 60 miles an hour, it was all over the road, especially when it got wet. As you see, it's moving. It has nothing to it. Um, the new one, let's go grab the new one. The new one, this is how all the joints are supposed to be. I can't even move it with one hand. That's good. Now it's going to be really easy to take off. 10 minute job, 15 minute job, take it off, and then a few minutes put it back on. I'm going to take the wheel off, obviously jack it up. I usually try to kick the wheel underneath there for a jack stand, so in case it does try to go down, I won't get hurt, or I won't damage the car, and I'll dug the jack back under there. Um, you're going to need to take the inner, the outer tie rod loose. This is basically all it does, it just screws right into the rack and pinion. And make sure your wheel's centered when you do that. It's going to be screwed in there. And get back here, hold on. Let me exaggerate this. The tie rod end is going to be here. Unscrew the tie, unbolt the tie rod end with the 18 millimeter bolt or uh, nut. And then what I did is just whacked it. And whacking it hard enough made that pop out. Um, there's another tool you can use. They call it a tie rod removal tool. It looks like a fork. Do I have it around here? I thought I pulled it out. Yeah, I do. Here it is. It would go under there. I try to use it as a last resort, especially if I want to keep the boot. You just hammer that in and it goes underneath. But I would try to hammer that first. Do not hammer on this at all. That's the worst thing. You ruin it. And do not hammer it up. The stud. I mean, unless you don't need it, then fine. Then what we did is the boot had a clamp on it. So we all pulled the boot forward. There was a little uh, plastic tie strap there so that might be a way you can tell that it's been replaced before factory you just use steel clamps and then we reached inside of there and we used a smaller adjustable wrench and we were able to pull it out pretty simple actually I was able to get enough force I didn't have to beat on it or nothing I couldn't use a big adjustable wrench and then two what we did is spray painted this so we knew where it was and we already broke this nut loose. So what we're going to do is count the number of spins this comes out, the turns, and put it back on the same number of turns so we get our alignment. So we just have the nut broken. We spray painted where it went up to so in case I need to redo it again. So we got one full one, two full ones, three full ones, four full ones, five, six, seven, so we got 15 turns, and here, if you need to take this nut off, we just broke it loose. We didn't really try to move it. This, this There's a shaft on here, hex head, so you can put a, a wrench on there, and we can just break it loose from here. And then we can take it off. We're just using our uh, tire laser to grab another wrench. Now this is kind of important. Put the boot on first. And this is a Moog problem solver. I love this. AC Delco has an advantage line, I guess they call it. This goes over the rack and pinion, which is just made in China, so I won't buy that. It's not even close to the same specs. And then here's a the groove you can put your pliers on. We'll turn it and put it on. And what made this come out easy is I had a little grease on the threads. So that's a good idea if you want to do that. So now we're just going to thread it back on, and we'll go from there. And if you forget your number of turns, since I painted it, I can see exactly where the nut was before, where the end of the threads is. I just line the old one up, and that'll get me close also, too. And now we just make sure that little bit of grease travels on the stud again that we have it in here. 
and tie right in because I like grease so things don't rust apart. And now I can put it in a good time to grease this. I like Moo, McQuaid, Norris, anything with a greasable fitting. And I like something that says problem solver on it too. And then you'll leave this loose till you put it, till you get the, the inside tightened first because this will change where it's going to go. By depending how well the other one goes in. So let's finish. Oh, by the way, they're same left and right for Cobalt SS, non Cobalt, or regular Cobalt, same thing. So this is a part number. And the instructions say basically like I did, there's little instructions there. Um, problems disconnect the battery it tells you so in case you don't blow up the airbag um, make sure it's adjusted to loosen the jam nut first which we did and make sure the threads are clean applying thread locking compound torque it to 53 foot pounds of torque reinstall the bellows and clamps there you go so it's kind of a big deal to use Loctite and this is red because we do not want that coming off. 55 foot pounds of torque, 53. Ah, I'm just going to tighten as tight as I can by hand and a little snug. Err, and that should be that. So now we're going to put the thread block on there. Make sure that's clean. Yeah. And put it in. So we got the threads clean, the boots on here, and if you need to, we're just going to use this clamp. It'll just slide on nice and tight like it did. These are what you use. These little plastic ties. So now we're putting the, make sure we put the purple locked tight on, or the red locked tight. Lots of it, or a good amount of it. So we have no issues. I don't need to put the whole tube on there, but there'll be enough to cover a lot of threads and it'll go on and drip out anyways. Now it's all on. And we're going to reach inside of here. Let me get you a good view. Position the camera. See that? That is where we're gonna go right on, guys. That's the the rack and pinion. So we're gonna put it on there, and the boot will slide over that big housing on the rack and pinion. You got it on. Yeah, we're gonna thread it on. So we're just threading it on by hand, and the tie rods on the outside's moving. I was sure I gotta double check my console. This video of how many times I turned it. I spray painted on the ground. What I put it on at at the moment, but the nut is where even where the other nut was. It's called jam nut. I actually give you a new one. I just too lazy to take it off and put it back on. That's jelly. Don't go bad. So now we're just tightening my hand, and we'll get the wrench and tighten it as tight as we can. And a tip: I think a adjustable wrench is going to be a little shorter than the, the right size wrench for this. Is you can turn the, the wrench around too and get the other angle of the wrench too to get to it. And if you're a little cockeyed, as long as you're not tightening it, building it down on it, it'll be fine. So now we're out, now we just tighten it down a little bit until so you can adjust the size of the wrench with the other part that's out of the car. You can't reach in there and adjust it. And that's how we're doing it. We're just tightening it over there.